This crying rainbow clown is actually a mashup of two concepts that I've done in previous years. Both my Tears of a Clown and black and white shattered face looks were representative of my struggles with mental health and a broken heart. I really love how this look came together as a pretty epic artistic manifestation of hidden pain. I love the contrast of the black and white against the bright colors, and I definitely want to create even more epic versions of this someday, but for now, I'm really pleased with how this came out, and I hope you all love it as well. It truly was perfect timing for me to create this look because I had the chance to show off these new Indie Beat Cosmetics colored face bases, which are super fun and amazing colored foundations. I'll put the link and the information down below in the description along with my code because I do have an affiliate code with Indie Beat Cosmetics. I definitely, definitely recommend checking these out, especially if you do a lot of creative looks. Like These are just so perfect. I'm starting off with applying the white all over my face, down my neck, and on my chest. This white is really just the base layer and I love that these foundations are super easy to blend and layer on like a lot of face paints. Once I'm done with that white layer, I'm going in with a liner brush and some of the black face base and I'm just using that to roughly sketch out the heart. This part can be a little bit tricky because sometimes, you know, your face isn't perfectly shaped like a heart and it can be a little difficult to go over any like bumps and curves on your face, but you just kind of have to feel your way through it carefully. We're all doing the best that we can. I used cotton swabs to kind of perfect my heart and adjust the shape a little bit and that reminds me that throughout this process I'm not setting the colored foundations yet because honestly I never set my foundation but if you do set it, it won't be as easy to go back and correct mistakes like that. Since I'm going for the illusion that the heart shape is almost like a mask, I'm using some gray to start building shadow behind the heart and just blending that outwards into the white. While I'm at it with the gray, I'm using it to contour completely around my face, adding extra shading in the small areas underneath my cheekbones. One thing that I would do differently if I were to redo this look is adding more shading and going darker along my jawline and just bringing it more strongly down my neck. We'll talk more about that later, but for right now, I'm just blending in all this gray and using different brushes and going back and forth with the white to really make that blend as seamless as I can. I'm being sure to carry the gray up into my hair because I didn't want the black and white illusion to just abruptly end at my hairline. I'm using darker gray to start building up the depth of this shading. I'm slowly working on deepening the shadow behind the heart and just blending it out carefully and then going back and forth with the white, you know, really trying to really trying to get that perfect blend in there. I tend to go back and forth a lot because I'm really obsessive, but that's also how I kind of like to work is just kind of going back and forth to just get that seamless gradient. So I know it looks a little chaotic, but it works out in the end. Now that I've got that first layer down using the black and white Indie Beat face bases, I'm going in with ColourPop's Smoke Show palette and using the black and gray matte eyeshadows to set some parts of the foundation. I'm carefully applying shadow all around the heart and blending it outwards. I'm mostly using like denser packing brushes, but I also went in with some larger fluffier blending brushes to really just buff out the shadow. I wanted to make the shadow darker and longer on the bottom point of the heart and kind of make it lighter towards the top where the curves are to give the illusion of a consistent light source. If I were to redo this look, I definitely would have spent more time on this and added more shading and eyeshadow to my jawline like I mentioned earlier, but you know, we're all working on improving ourselves. I just prefer to critique my own work before someone else gets the chance to. But I also like to mention what I would do differently just to help those of you that are using this video to recreate the look. When I'm done shading, I'm going in with some cotton swabs to perfect that inner edge of the heart and then just reapplying some concealer on those areas. I'm using the purple, orange, yellow, red, and white face bases. I knew exactly where I was going to be putting down the colors because I already sketched this look out on my iPad and I'm just following that face chart. I'm starting with applying pink around my mouth at the bottom of the heart and I mixed the pink using red, purple, and white. Then I'm going in with orange and applying this above where I put the pink and also carrying it up my nose and to the other edge of the heart at the top. 
I actually mixed the orange with white and to be completely honest I don't know why I did that and I wish that I just used the colors straight up because it would have been a tad more vibrant. I'm now adding yellow all around to fill in the rest of the heart and again I mixed the yellow with white for no good reason. Um, it's just like diluting it and making it you know not quite as vibrant as it could be but I guess for some reason I was creatively feeling the pastel vibes. I'm really taking the time to go back and forth blending the colors together because you have to do that in order to get the soft, nicely, evenly faded gradient. Once I finish with the colored foundation base, I'm wiping off my lids and applying some eye primer to prepare for this eye look. I'm using Blend Bunny Cosmetics eyeshadows from both the Blends and the Surge palette. I am seriously obsessed with both of these palettes. I use them pretty much every time I do a look now. I will have all the information down below in the description because just like with Indie Beat Cosmetics, you can use my code JULES at checkout if you're interested in making a purchase. So for my eyeshadow, I started with a very deep blue in my outer V and through my crease. Then around that, I'm packing on and blending out a lighter blue shade. Around that lighter blue, I added a really bright yellow shade, bringing it down my cheek and up into my eyebrow. I used a couple different blues, greens, and yellows from the Blend Bunny palettes. I think I just went into full artist mode trying to get the smoothest transitions and just kind of like mismatching and going back and forth between different blues, greens, and yellows. I wasn't just limiting myself to three eyeshadows. And I think that's what's truly amazing and different about these palettes is how unique and perfect the colors are for creating really nice smooth gradients. I'm just going through the same process with my other eye. When I'm blending, especially with bright colors or in rainbowy situations, it's really, really helpful to go back and forth with the different eyeshadows to really just adjust the shading and achieve the desired shape with certain colors. For this look, I really wanted the blue to blend out really softly into the yellow because I wanted to make sure I got a really good bit of green in there. I'm using P. Louise's Hint of Mint colored base to give myself a half cut crease. I'm bringing it pretty far up because I really want this cut crease to be sufficiently dramatic for a heartbroken clown. I'm going back in with some of the deep blue eyeshadow to buff out the edges of the base and then over top of that I'm using a shimmery teal eyeshadow from the Blend Bunny Surge palette. Being the chaotic artist that I am, I'm going back in with some yellow foundation to really just make that yellow transition seamless as heck. I also decided to go back in with more face base to brighten the vibrancy of the colors that I previously diluted with white. I'm adding some red face base on my nose and using a mini sponge to blend it out. Over top of that, I'm using some red liquid lipstick to make my nose, you know, extra red. But don't worry, I'm going to be chaotically switching up the nose again later on. As for my brows, I'm just using the regular product that I always use and filling them in pretty much the same way that I usually do. Except, of course, I'm also adding that upwards slope at the front of my brow because this is a sad clown, so we have to give it a dramatically sad eyebrow expression. You can definitely create even more dramatically sad eyebrows if you choose to cover your own brows and draw some on top, but I just prefer to follow my own natural shape. It's time for one of my favorite parts, which is adding sparkles and highlights. I'm using Milani's Electric Forest Liquid Eyeshadow on my lids. For my inner corner and brow bone highlight, I'm using Sugar Pills Lumi Pigment. Before highlighting my face, I of course have to add one more round of vibrancy because I realized I wanted my cheeks to appear more flushed like a classic clown. Then I used a random liquid highlight as a quick base for this pigment that I just got from Makeup A Murder Cosmetics. It's part of a line called Poison Highlights, which are so beautifully iridescent and just perfect to use as highlights. This one I'm using now is called Subtle Hint, but I also got a couple other shades that I'm really excited to try out. 
Now I'm creating some wings with Huda Beauty's liquid eyeliner. Honestly, I'm just getting used to filming again, so this part is definitely not so expertly filmed with the angles and stuff. I really appreciate you all bearing with me through these past few years of chaos and inconsistency and just loving my content and supporting me even though it's not perfect. Also brought the eyeliner above my crease like in a graphic liner style. Of course I added in those little inner corner point thingies which in hindsight could have definitely been a little bit more dramatic. I used black to shade along my lower lash line but within my waterline I applied Urban Decay's fishbowl eyeshadow stick. Please prepare yourself because now we are about to dive into peak chaos territory. I'm starting my lips by lining them with Melt Cosmetics 1979 lip liner and then I'm going in with Melt Cosmetics Mariachi and using that to fill in my lips and add little smile lines at the corners. I went over that with MAC Cosmetics Lavender Jade Lipstick. Then I used black gel liner on an eyeliner brush to precisely shade the corners and edges of the lips. Jumping from lips to nose, I'm adding a little bit of concealer right to the center of my nose. Then around that in a circular shape, I'm going in with dark red eyeshadow and really just blending that around and blending it out. And now I'm using black to deepen the shading more around the perimeter of the heart. I'm using a combination of black gel eyeliner and black eyeshadow to create a really clean edge for that border. Then going back to the lips, I decided I wanted them to be lighter and give them a more dramatic gradient of purple, so I started patting some white face base in the central areas of my lips. I'm using the MAC lipstick to blend and I even went in with some dark purple eyeshadow shading on the inner parts of my lips, but I would definitely recommend using some type of liquid lipstick product instead because the shadow wears off you know, really easily, especially on the inner parts of the lips. Moving on, back up to my eyes, I'm applying Amy June Lashes in the style Audrey. I also have a discount code with Amy June Lashes, so if you're curious, you can check them out down below in the description. I will put the link. Alright, it's time to buckle up and get ready for this lightning round of finishing touches. Finally, I added a little bit of the Makeup A Murder pigment onto the center of my nose. And then I'm going back in with the Urban Decay Fishbowl Eyeshadow Stick and mapping out a tear beneath each of my eyes. I'm adding some shading with blue eyeshadow around the top of the tear to really just blend it in with my lower lash line. I also stuck on some pear-shaped rhinestones at the end of each tear and then used the Milani Electric Forest Liquid Eyeshadow to really make the tears super sparkly, just like my lids. As you might be able to tell, I was in chaotic artist rush mode while filming this, so I'm really just going ham on my chest with white and black face bases. I started with white and then I went in with black lines where I wanted to add shadow. I'm just blending out and deepening the shadow and adding more gray and white along the way. And of course, my biggest regret while filming this is that I didn't add enough shading around my neck. If I were to redo it, I definitely would have tried to add much more shading and just make those areas darker, more defined shadows. But for now, I'm just kind of freewheeling it, trying to get it to look decent and just following the like natural curvature of my body, just making soft shadows. I'm adding some white shimmery highlight on my collarbones. And one last touch of sparkle, I'm applying Lime Crime's Unicorn Queen Lip Topper to make my lips glittery and cute. Finally, we have the finished look. I love how it came out. I think it's a really beautiful concept with some super deep meaning behind it. So I'm really, really excited to see all your recreations. I know you guys are absolutely going to kill this one. Make sure to tag me on social media if you do recreate it. I promise y'all, I'm going to be so damn active on the socials, you are not even ready for it. At one point, I did add some white contacts to give this look extra creepy vibes. And you can find the link for those contact lens down below in the description, along with all of my social media info and discount codes for the products that I featured today. 
By the way, the reason I was a little bit rushed with this look is because I was racing against the sun, trying to finish up before it got too dark out to take any pictures. I met up with my awesomely talented photographer friend Sarah, who took these stunning shots of the look with my full rainbow outfit. This past October, Sarah and I started offering a really awesome, fun Halloween makeover package, which includes makeup and then a photo session. We're going to continue offering this package throughout the year leading up to next Halloween. If you're interested in booking with us for a fantasy transformation experience of your freaking dreams, you can find all the details down below in my description of this video, and I'm sure I'll be talking about it on my other social medias throughout the coming months as well. Thank you so much for watching, I love you, and I'll see you soon.